been hot. We actually had our third, uh, our second hottest May on record. I was just looking at the data there, and I don't think that surprises anyone. Out there in the tropics, we continue to watch potential tropical cyclone one, that mouthful there, but it's just a disturbance. The circulation was still broad and kind of messy uh, over the past couple of days, and that's why this never got a name as it moved through South Florida. But notice all the rain now up towards the Bahamas and heading into the Atlantic. So the worst of it is fortunately past Florida at this point. It does still have a chance to become tropical storm Alex today or tomorrow. And then notice as we go into Monday and Tuesday, it'll continue to move just to the north of Bermuda, bringing then some rain and choppy seas and never really strengthens beyond uh, a tropical storm. So it still has a chance to get the name. Alex, now it's a reminder you don't need a name system to get big impacts, and this was not a you know a wind impact or really a surge impact for Florida, but boy, did it dump some heavy rainfall. And look at this. This is over the past two days. Radar estimating widespread six to eight inches, and in some locations, as we mentioned earlier, picking up 11 to maybe even a foot of rainfall. Miami saw quite a bit of flooding, and portions down near the Keys saw flooding as well. Look at this though. Radar estimating out in the Atlantic. Once you get in between the Bahamas and the Atlantic. Radar estimating 15 to 16 inches of rain has fallen and it's still falling in those locations. So it's just a reminder that you don't have to have a name system to get big impacts. And oftentimes the weaker systems that don't get named are a tropical depression are the biggest rainmakers and that was the case. It's also a great lesson. We were preaching about this a couple of weeks ago because it blew up on social media. The loop current. We all know the loop current because it's what fed Ida. It's what fed Katrina, Rita, all these big hurricanes. But you got to have a lot more than just the loop current. And this thing right here went right over the loop current. Some of the hottest, deepest waters in the Gulf of Mexico didn't do a thing. That's because wind shear was working on it and dry air was working on it. So you got to have a lot more than the hot Gulf waters. And as I always say, the Gulf waters are always hot. If the wind shear is too high and you got dry air, you're just simply going to get a messy storm. And that's what we had with that one. But once again, it can bring big impacts with rainfall.